Welcome to my series, In the Moment. Episode 1. These are some selected moments from 1 to 4. A number is chosen, and we go through the clip. In each of the clips, I give a brief summary of that situation. I'd like to start off with some hunting for Pollock. Behind box number 2, we find the fish that suddenly appeared out of nowhere. So we're at my home place. A nice little island here with currents in the water and a deep channel in the fjord that rises right here. Lots of nice fish hanging around in this area. As you can hear, it was a bit windy that day. Found me a nice shelf to rest on. Visibility in the water is as expected. Cloudy in the top layer and clear below 5-6 meter. Very common with this type of visibility in the water early in the summer, but I think it's perfectly fine for hunting. So this is a section from the nautical chart around the island. What I like about this place is how close the island is to where the deepest part of the fjord ends. The fish that migrate into the fjord meet the end and search upwards towards the shallower areas. The island is an attractive option because there are currents and plenty of food around it. So I imagine they like to hang around this area. The birds flying in the area are also a good sign. I finally came across a nice pollock, which I took home. Watch how it sneaks up from the kelp forest. Right place at the right time, fish on. The next clip takes us a little further north, an area I have spent a lot of time exploring. Behind box number four, I hunt for Pollock under a bridge in very nice surroundings as a bonus. Always exciting with bridges. On my way out, I passed one that unfortunately did not survive the winter. Nature can be harsh, but I guess that was his fate. I don't think many people have picked scallops in this area because it's packed here. Because of that animal on the shore, I didn't bring any home from this bay. The scallops are left until the process on land has done its work. I prefer the bridge today. So what I want to show from this place is an encounter I had with a pollock that appeared somewhat surprisingly. Right before I shot this one, I had a chance at another fish. But the safety on the harpoon was on, and I messed it up. So, this was a good replacement. Happy man. The next cutout is a kind of demonstration of how quickly the weather can develop while you are out diving. Something that is absolutely certain is, one cannot defeat the weather gods. Behind box number three, we see how the wind increases during a diving trip. Well, 
A slightly overdramatic intro for the creator must be allowed to add sometimes. But notice how calm the weather conditions are at the beginning of the dive, compared to about a little further on in the video. The goal for the day is to get out to the pillars to survey the bottom conditions now while the visibility in the water is optimal. There were fairly calm wind conditions when we got here, but it is picking up, just as we are about to swim towards the bridge. A few gusts of wind were reported this day, but this is a little more than expected. Started by exploring the nearest pillar and the surrounding area. Then the plan is to check out the other one after that. We are in the middle of February, and visibility in the water is excellent for getting to know new places. But that wind is getting ridiculous. So the other pillar will have to be checked out another time. It is not a difficult decision for me to withdraw when nature starts barking. We backed off and got out of the situation, found a safer spot, and did some much calmer final dives there. I have my own handheld radio with me. It is registered on the fleet with its own call signal and has a so-called distress button, which is held for five seconds and gives a signal for help to the rescue team with the relevant coordinates if needed. This one is an interesting one. The last sequence out is an attempt to catch a turbot with a little 60 railgun, but not without problems along the way. Box number one actually shows a really nice catch, only with a little more action in addition. East in Norway, the place I started with freediving, which eventually developed more towards spearfishing. The spear gun you see me using is a Spetten 60 railgun. This is the first time I've used it, and actually, for no particular reason, the last time I've used it. It was bought in specifically for turbot hunting. At least that was the idea behind this purchase. Now, it only stands as a decoration in my wardrobe, unfortunately. Looking for turbot, especially big turbot, requires some time and patience, and timing can be decisive. Lying on the surface, you scan the area in places where you think the fish are. A lot of searching around, in other words. Well, in this picture, a turbot will soon appear lying on the bottom. Watch closely and see if you can spot it. Well, that arrow should have landed on the opposite side of the fish. That was the desire and the intuition here as well. In this case, much of the fish was covered with gravel, so I rolled the dice and shot. In addition, I must have hit a rock under the fish or something like that because the arrow didn't go through the fish, but instead it just bounced off on the way up. But the fish is secured and the weight stopped at 3.5 kilos. All in all, happy man. About 19 months after this, I come across a new turbot, only on the opposite side of the country in the middle of winter. Click on the video here to get the whole story.